If the words life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness don't include the right to experiment with your own consciousness, then the Declaration of Independence isn't worth the hemp it was written on. Stop consuming images and start producing them. You are a divine being. You matter. You count. You come from realms of unimaginable power and light, and you will return to those realms. You are an explorer, and you represent our species. And the greatest good you can do is to bring back a new idea, because our world is endangered by the absence of good ideas. Our world is in crisis because of the absence of consciousness. You simply have to turn your back on a culture that has gone sterile and dead, and get with the program of a living world and the imagination. The imagination is the goal of history. I see culture as an effort to literally realize our collective dreams. Nature loves courage. You make the commitment and nature will respond to that commitment by removing impossible obstacles. Dream the impossible dream and the world will not grind you under. It will lift you up. This is the trick. This is what all the teachers and philosophers who really counted, who really touched the alchemical gold, this is what they understood. This is the shamanic dance in the waterfall. This is how magic is done. By hurling yourself into the abyss and discovering it's a feather bed. Psychedelics are illegal not because a loving government is concerned that you may jump out of a third story window. Psychedelics are illegal because they dissolve the opinion structures and culturally laid down models of behavior and information processing. They open you up to the possibility that everything you know is wrong. The artist's task is to save the soul of mankind, and anything less is a dithering while Rome burns. If artists cannot find the way, then the way cannot be found. Animals are something invented by plants to move seeds around, an extremely young solution to a peculiar problem which they faced. The syntactical nature of reality, the real secret of magic, is that the world is made of words. And if you know the words that the world is made of, you can make of it whatever you wish. The purpose of life is to familiarize oneself with this after-death body, so that the act of dying will not create confusion in the psyche. We tend to disempower ourselves. We tend to believe that we don't matter. And in the act of taking that idea to ourselves, we give everything away to somebody else, to something else. The shaman is not merely a sick man or a madman. He is a sick man who has healed himself. You see, a secret is not something untold, something which can't be told. If you don't have a plan, you become part of somebody else's plan. Nature is not our enemy, to be raped and conquered. Nature is ourselves, to be cherished and explored. We have been to the moon, we have charted the depths of the ocean and the heart of the atom, but we have a fear of looking inward to ourselves because we sense that is where all the contradictions flow together. My technique is, I don't believe anything. If you believe in something, you are automatically precluded from believing its opposite. It's clearly a crisis of two things, of consciousness and conditioning. We have the technological power, the engineering skills to save our planet, to cure disease, to feed the hungry, to end war. But we lack the intellectual vision, the ability to change our minds. We must decondition ourselves from 10,000 years of bad behavior and not easy. We can begin the restructuring of thought by declaring legitimate what we have denied for so long. Let us declare nature to be legitimate. The notion of illegal plants is obnoxious and ridiculous in the first place. Some kind of dialogue is now going on between individual human beings and the sum total of human knowledge, and nothing can stop it. Nothing comes unannounced, 
but many can miss the announcement. So it's very important to actually listen to your own intuition rather than driving through it. Western civilization is a loaded gun pointed at the head of this planet. Television is by nature the dominator drug par excellence. Control of content, uniformity of content, repeatability of content make it inevitably a tool of coercion, brainwashing, and manipulation. Ego is a structure that is erected by a neurotic individual who is a member of a neurotic culture against the facts of the matter. And culture, which we put on like an overcoat, is the collectivized consensus about what sort of neurotic behaviors are acceptable. We are told no, we're unimportant, we're peripheral. Get a degree, get a job, get this, get that. And then you're a player, but you don't want to play in the game. You want to reclaim your mind and get it out of the hands of the cultural engineers who want to turn you into a half-baked moron consuming all this trash that's being manufactured out of the bones of a dying world. It is the imagination that argues for the divine spark within human beings. It is literally a descent of the world soul into all of us. The apocalypse is not something which is coming. The apocalypse has arrived in major portions of the planet and it's only because we live within a bubble of incredible privilege and social insulation that we still have the luxury of anticipating the apocalypse. Even as the 19th century had come to grips with the notion of human descent from apes, we must now come to terms with the fact that those apes were stoned apes. We are so much the victims of abstraction that with the earth in flames we can barely rouse ourselves to wander across the room and look at the thermostat. If you keep yourself as the final arbiter, you will be less susceptible to infection by cultural illusion. The problem is not to find the answer, it's to face the answer. The real tension is not between matter and spirit, or time and space. The real tension is between information and nonsense. Nothing lasts, but nothing is lost. Matter is not lacking in magic, matter is magic. People are so alienated from their own soul that when they meet their soul, they think it comes from another star system. Ideology always paves the way toward atrocity. If you're not the hero of your own novel, then what kind of novel is it? You need to do some heavy editing. Unexamined cultural values and limitations of language have made us unwitting prisoners of our own assumptions. The culmination of man's effort in time will be the perfection and the release of the human soul. And it's not that we are doing it, it's that a natural law that we are still unaware of is inexorably unfolding. Our world is in danger by the absence of good ideas. Our world is in crisis because of the absence of consciousness. And so, to whatever degree any one of us can bring back a small piece of the picture and contribute it to the building of the new paradigm, then we participate in the redemption of the human spirit. And that, after all, is what it's really all about. We have the money, the power, the medical understanding, the scientific know-how, the love and the community to produce a kind of human paradise. But we are led by the least among us, the least intelligent, the least noble, the least visionary. We are led by the least among us and we do not fight back against the dehumanizing values that are handed down as control icons. Culture is a perversion. It fetishizes objects, creates consumer mania, it preaches endless forms of false happiness, endless forms of false understanding in the form of squirrely religions and silly cults. It invites people to diminish themselves and dehumanize themselves by behaving like machines. Chaos is what we've lost touch with. This is why it is given a bad name. 
It is feared by the dominant archetype of our world, which is ego, which clenches because its existence is defined in terms of control. You have to take seriously the notion that understanding the universe is your responsibility, because the only understanding of the universe that will be useful to you is your own understanding. The future of communication is the future of the evolution of the human soul. Our need to feel part of the world seems to demand that we express ourselves through creative activity. Part of what psychedelics do is they decondition you from cultural values. This is what makes it such a political hot potato, since all culture is a kind of con game. The most dangerous candy you can hand out is one which causes people to start questioning the rules of the game. Of the game.